Mouth brooding fish. Mouth brooding, also known as oral incubation and buccal incubation, is the care given by some groups of animals to their offspring by holding them in the mouth of the parent for extended periods of time. African cichlids are mostly mouth brooders. When they breed, the female will pick up the eggs and hold them in her mouth. Whilst the male fertilizes them, she will hold the eggs for up to 28 days until the fry have hatched and have developed into fully formed fry.30. Baby fish mouth, Edible baby mammoth. fish mouth. In addition to being mouth brooders, some species continue to protect their young after they hatch, calling out to them when there is danger, and letting them swim back into their mouth to hold them safely away. Some species also build nests and protect the young after they hatch. Surinam frog. Unlike other toads, the Surinam toad has an unusual way of reproducing. Males call to the females by making a clicking sound underwater. A willing female releases 60 to 100 eggs, and the male fertilizes them and pushes the eggs onto her back, where they stick to her skin. Females of the South American amphibian go through literally backbreaking labor. Kids getting under your skin? It's no joke for a female Surinam toad, she gives birth to her offspring right out of holes in her back, Surinam toads. Surinam toads are best known for their reproductive habits. Unlike the majority of toads, the males of this species do not attract mates with croaks and other sounds often associated with these aquatic animals. Instead, they produce a sharp clicking sound by snapping the hyoid bone in their throats. 4. The partners rise from the floor while amplexus and flip through the water in arcs. What happens to Surinam toad after birth? Once they have emerged from their mother's back, the toads begin a largely solitary life. After giving birth to the new toads, the mother slowly sheds the thin layer of skin that was used to birth them, and can begin the cycle again. Kangaroo A female kangaroo is pregnant for 21 to 38 days, and she can give birth to up to four offspring at one time, though this is unusual. At birth, the baby, called a joey, can be as small as a grain of rice, or as big as a bee, at 0.2 to 0.9 inches, 5 to 25 millimeters, according to the San Diego Zoo. I am short, fat, proud of that, and so with all my mind. Immediately after birth, it uses its already clawed and well-developed forelimbs to crawl up the mother's body and enter the pouch. That's where the pouch comes in. It's a pocket of skin that acts like a second womb, giving the joey a safe, cozy environment to grow. Seahorse The unusual thing in animal kingdom is male giving birth. After an elaborate courtship dance, females deposit their eggs into a male's brood pouch, where he fertilizes them. As the embryos grow, the male's abdomen becomes distended, just as in a human pregnancy. When he is ready to give birth, the abdomen opens, and contractions expel the juvenile seahorses. It's tough being a baby seahorse. Of the hundreds of babies that the male gives birth to, only one or two will survive to become adults and have babies of their own.25. Less than half a percent of infants survive to adulthood. Why male seahorses give birth? Though unusual for the animal kingdom, we know that biologically male seahorses carry their young in pouch on their tail. It's the sperm and eggs that give it away. Biologically, the male sex is always that which produces smaller reproductive cells, sperm, usually adapted to be more mobile. These survival rates are actually fairly high compared to other fish, because of their protected gestation, making the process worth the great cost to the father. Kiwi bird. They say giving birth is the hardest thing but here in kiwi bird's case it is more harder than anybody else including humans. Imagine humans giving birth to a 24 pounds baby not possible, it happens in kiwi's case. While an ostrich may lay the world's largest bird's egg, it is actually the smallest in proportion to the mother, just 2% of her body weight. By comparison, the kiwi egg takes up about 20% of the mother's body. In humans, a baby at full term is 5% of its mother's body weight. While laying such a large egg is painful, there is an advantage. Most bird eggs are 35-40% to yolk but the kiwi's egg is a 65% yolk. The nutritious yolk produces kiwi chicks that hatch fully feathered and independent, and is so enormous that it continues to sustain them for the first week of life, chicks can provide for themselves and kiwi parents seldom have to feed their offspring. Thanks for watching. Please do like share and subscribe.